Okay, so today we're gonna to be making challah bread. Our challah bread is going to be used for our French toast for our breakfast cookery unit. So we're gonna start here with a little bit of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add in some salt. I'm gonna just give that a little stir. Okay, while that is, I'm gonna set that aside. Uh, what I also wanna do is I wanna take, I have honey and I have some yeast here. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna take just a portion of my total liquid for the recipe and just pour some in here. And what this is going to do is it's going to activate the yeast, kind of dissolve it a little bit, activate it, rehydrate it, and also allow for the honey to mix in with it. The honey is gonna serve um, two purposes. Number one, we're getting the flavor of the honey in our recipe, just a small amount though, but enough to give a slight flavor in the background, and then also sweetness to our recipe. It also, along with the yeast, is going to feed the yeast and allow the yeast to continue to grow so that it will cause the fermentation action. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our flour here. I'm gonna create a well in the center. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in the remainder of my water. I'm gonna add in one whole egg. I'm gonna add in some melted butter. Melted butter is gonna also um, help to tenderize the bread and also give us some really great flavor. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add that yeast and honey. So you'll always see me using a rubber spatula to make sure that I get all of my product out and get it into my recipe. Okay, so now it's a pretty straightforward mixing method. I'm gonna go ahead and just break up that yolk a little bit. Just start to combine that in the center, bringing in a little bit of flour at a time. And very similar to our other doughs that we've been making in our culinary arts class. We're gonna bring all the flour in with our ingredients. The liquid is going to start to absorb the flour. Okay, so once you really can't do much more mixing in the bowl and we're getting ready to knead, we're gonna take our ingredients here. spatula, make sure I scrape everything off. A little bit of flour on the work surface. And then bring the recipe out of the bowl. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna start to bring the dough together. And then the next part is we're gonna knead. We're just making a really small batch here because um, it's just enough to make our French toast, um, but you can go ahead and make this double or triple the size if you wanna make more dough or more loaves of bread. And challah bread um, typically is going to be a braided bread. So we're gonna show you that process after our dough is rised. We're gonna braid the dough, so that gives, gives us a very um, classic shape to our bread and then we will proof it and bake it and have it ready for our French toast. So this is a rich dough in the fact that it has butter and it also has whole eggs in it. So the fat from the butter and the egg yolk is going to actually tenderize our dough and give us a really soft and delicate dough in the end. So what I'm doing to knead my bread is I'm basically just pulling it um, over on top of itself and pushing out with the palm of my hand. I can feel it's a little tacky on the table, but I don't wanna go and add any more flour because that flour is gonna dry out the dough. So as long as it's not you know, a big mess on the table, the tackiness is okay. If it was sticking to the table, I could use something like a bench scraper or a bowl scraper and I could scrape it up and then continue to move. 
as long as I'm keeping it moving pretty quickly, it shouldn't stick. If you really, really needed to add just a little bit, that's all you're adding. You're not adding really too much flour at all. Okay, so as I mix the dough, I'm feeling that the dough is getting much smoother in texture. It still looks a little bumpy here to me. Um, it's still staying a little bit indented, so I'm gonna continue to knead this until it's super smooth. Okay, so now I see a much smoother dough. When I press it in, you can see it bounces back up, so that indicates that the gluten has developed enough. And then what I'll use is a little bit of tan spray. Not olive oil, because olive oil would actually alter the flavor. Just a little bit of tan spray to keep it from sticking to the bowl as it rises. And then a little bit of saran wrap. We're gonna cover this on up, put it in a warm spot in our kitchen, and come back in about an hour and a half to two hours when this is doubled in size. Okay, so now we're going to uh, prepare our dough for baking. So we're gonna unwrap the dough and we are going to braid this dough for the holiday bread. I'm gonna take it out of my bowl. I just like to pat any excess uh, pan spray that it may have on it uh, because it will stick much better together if there's not a lot of excess oil. What I would like to do now is kind of eyeball it uh, divided in three. So I'm just going to estimate it and then I'm going to cut through and we're going to make three ropes to braid the hollow bread. I'm going to separate them. I'm going to take my first one, okay? You don't want any excess oil on your counter uh, because it will stick too much. So what you do is you form it. You, when you're rolling it, you start in the begin, in the middle and work your way out. And we're going to roll it out to about 18 inches long. So that's my first one, my second one. And if they're not uh, exactly even, you don't have to worry. We're gonna actually put the longest one or the biggest one in the middle. Two. Three. Okay. It's about 18 inches. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my braiding. I'm gonna take my longest one and I'm gonna put it in the middle. Then I'm gonna put the other two on the outside. If not longest, it's also gonna be the one that maybe was the most uneven cut. And you're gonna start your braiding. So I'm gonna to start to put them together up at the top, but I'm actually gonna come back to this point because um, the braid will look much better if I start here, work my way backwards, and then complete it um, at the end. So I'm going to take, so you keep the one in the center, you take your left one, put it over the right, and now that left one is the center. So you're always going to be going over the center. And there's always gonna be a new center uh, piece. So again, left over the center, right over the center, left over the center, right over the center, left over the center, right over the center, all the way down to the end. Okay, trying to keep it as tight as you possibly can. Okay, and then when you get to the bottom, you're gonna wanna crimp it. All right, and so then I'm gonna turn it around and I'm going to fix this side. Okay, if it's a little bit bulky, I'm just gonna even them out. And again, I'm going to, you have to go backwards here. So you take the center and it's actually gonna go to the left over. And then you're gonna take the right one and it's gonna go on, uh, the right will go under the center, just where you can seal it and it looks a little bit more appealing. Okay, you're gonna take your ends, you're gonna tuck it in, and then that's it. So I have a baking sheet here that has a piece of parchment paper on this. This is going to help prevent it from sticking to the bottom of the pan. When I pick it up, I'm going to hold it with two hands, I'm gonna put it onto my pan, 
If it's too long, you can actually put it on an angle. And I'm going to uh, let this do its second rising. I'm going to cover with plastic wrap and I'm going to let it rise for about an hour and a half or until it doubles in size. Uh, and then I'm going to get it ready to bake. All right, so now I'm, I heard my timer go off for my bread and I look in and see how beautifully browned it is. I'm gonna take it on out. All right, so what I'm looking at here is that I have a beautifully baked bread. You can see the shine that's on here. This is all from the egg white, um, the, the wash that we had done. If I flip it over, I can see it's nicely browned on the bottom. And if I tap on it, I hear that it's hollow. So to that indicates to me that my bread is complete. And now I'm going to allow that to cool before I slice it and make my French toast.